This is a tutorial video for how to use Vernier Video Analysis to analyze one-dimensional translational motion from a recorded video. Uh, when you open up a new experiment, the first thing you're going to get is this uh, menu for importing a video. You click on that. Um, I'm going to show how to import a video from your computer. Apparently you can uh, do it from a phone as well. I have not figured out how to, how to do that yet. I'm just going to grab, I have a series of videos of vehicles moving past the high school. And so I'm going to grab one of those and import that video. And after it's imported, this is, you have your video. Um, the first thing you want to do is um, advance the video to where you can actually do some analysis. So I'm going to scooch this forward until I see the vehicle that I recorded actually come onto the screen. So there it, it's on the screen. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this forward, this little pointer forward, and that moves the clock up to where I'm going to start my analysis. So I'm going to kind of match those two. Next thing I want to do is uh, tell the software how to translate from pixels on the screen into an actual length. So I'm going to click on System, and then I get this little uh, pair of circles connected by a line. I'm going to put one of those circles, center one of those circles on this sign that I put by the road, and the other one on this other sign. And the reason I'm doing this is because I purposely put those signs in my video so that I would have a reference point for length. Um, it tells me that that's 322 pixels. I want to tell it that that is the equivalent of 10 meters because that's how far apart I put those two signs. All right, so now it knows how to translate from pixels into distance. The next thing I want to do is establish a coordinate axis system. So I'm going to click on origin, and I get this little uh, set of axes, x and y axis. Now I can move them around, and I want the x, positive x to be in the direction where I'm actually moving. So that's actually appropriate for this video because the truck is going to be moving to the right. If the trucker was moving to the left, well, then I would just rotate it around like this so that positive x was in the other direction. So that's how you can change that. And I'm not too concerned about y because this is only one-dimensional motion. Now I'm going to take this origin and I'm going to stick it on a feature of this truck that I know I'll be able to find every time and just call that the zero point. I'm going to use the, the center of the wheel. That's a pretty easy spot to find. And I'm just going to set it there. So now I've established what is positive x and I've established what's my zero point for, for position. So now I have to do something about time. So I'm going to click on this little gear here and open up this box. And the frame rate is defaulted at 29.97 frames per second, which is standard video. I shot this in slow motion, which is 240 frames per second. So I'm going to change that. The other thing I'm going to change is uh, this frame advance. If I have it only advance one frame every time I click a point on here for my analysis, that's going to be 240 frames for every second, and that's a lot of clicking, and the points are going to be really close together. So I'm going to adjust that. I'm going to, I'm going to go to 10 frames. So every time I click a point, it's going to move the movie 10 frames forward so I can put my next point on there. Get rid of that box, and now I'm ready to start my actual analysis. So I'm going to go up in the upper left-hand corner and click the Add button, and then I'm going to click on that origin center that I picked out earlier. And when I do that, it lays a point down and it advances my movie forward 10 frames. I'm going to find that same spot on my vehicle and do it again. And then I'm just going to keep doing that until my vehicle is all the way off the screen. And then I'm going to purposely screw a point up. And then I'm going to stop my analysis. OK, so the reason I, I messed that one point up is I want to show you how you can get rid of that point. There's an Edit button. If I click on Edit and I go grab that point, as soon as I click on it, a little trash can appears up in the corner. And I can drag that point in the trash can. And it takes it off of my screen, and it also takes it off of my graph. On the right-hand side, you may have noticed there's a graph now of position versus time. 
It's showing both X position and Y position. I don't care about Y position. That's just the up and down, and that wasn't changing. And this is only one-dimensional motion. So I'll click on this, and I'll turn Y off. When I go back to my graph, I can see that it looks like probably a straight line relationship. Uh, this is built on the graphical analysis platform, so if you're familiar with that, uh, you know how to do a line fit. I'm just going to click here, do apply curve fit. It's linear by default, and I'll just click on apply. So the little box pops up. My R is very good, very close to 1, so it means a line is probably a good approximation of this motion, which means that the, mo the vehicle is moving at constant velocity. The vertical intercept is very close to zero, which makes sense because I set the origin um, and the zero time so that that would happen. And my slope is 13.16, and so that's the velocity of this truck in meters per second because I measured my positions in meters and my times in seconds. This could be done for motion where the vehicle is accelerating as well. You just wouldn't have a straight line relationship, so then you'd find that out by doing an analysis, and then you could uh, transform by you know, squaring the time axis if you needed to, just like you would for any other parabolic type relationship. Hope this is helpful. Good luck.